Hello, this is Michael Osborne with Webucator. In this video, we're going to step through the process of configuring a new ASP.NET MVC5 application and getting AngularJS up and running as part of that application. Now, this video is based on a blog entry by Patrick Person. Patrick agreed to let us create this video discussing his article, which is available on his blog at the URL that you see here. So the first question we need to ask before we dive into all this material is, why do we need another getting started project to look at? If you look out on the internet, you'll find a number of resources like Angular JS Seed or Angular Start or whatever. They're all good resources. They all uh, are very explanatory and they work great. The problem is they tend to start from a somewhat advanced point. In other words, they don't really dig into the details, the whole picture, if you will, of what is involved in setting up the Angular component inside an MVC project. So that's really the goal of this video and of this blog entry is to describe all the plumbing, all the details required in order to make Angular work within our MVC5 project. So in order to set this up, the first thing we're going to need is an ASP.NET MVC5 project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Visual Studio and we're going to create a new project. And when this opens up, we're going to choose ASP.NET. So we're going to go to, first of all, C Sharp, not VB. We're going to go to Web, and we're going to choose an ASP.NET Web Application. I'm just going to take the default name, Web Application 1, for now. It doesn't really matter what we call it. And I'm going to say OK. Now, at this point, it's going to ask me which particular template would I like to use. I'm going to choose the MVC template. And I'm going to turn off hosting in the cloud. We're going to keep all this local. There's really no reason to host in the cloud. And we're also going to specify that we want to include a web API in case we need to do that a little further on in the project. So we're going to say OK. And this will create for us our ASP.NET MVC5 project. Now, what exactly does that mean? What is an MVC5 project? Well, an MVC5 project basically uses a framework, pretty much what you would expect from any MVC type application. It uses routing and it uses controllers to serve views to the client. Now, the routing is defined in the what is known as the route config class, which is in the app start folder, which we'll look at here in just a moment as soon as this finishes building the project. There we go. So if we go to app start, you'll notice that we have a route config file here, a route config class. And in here, it defines a route, a default route. This route maps to the controller, the action, and the ID. So in other words, what this means is if I go to my uh, site and I say my site slash uh, customers slash get slash seven, what I'm saying is I want to use the customer controller, the action would be the get action, and the seven would be the value or the ID that I'm passing in, which by the way is an optional parameter. Another thing I'd like to point out is that the controller and the action both have default values. So in other words, if you go to the site and you don't provide a value for the controller and the action, it will default to the home controller and the action is the index. Now, let's talk about these controllers for a moment. All these controllers reside in the controllers folder. So if we go look in our controllers folder, you will see that we have a home controller, a managed controller, and an account controller. If we look at the home controller, you will see that the home controller includes three actions. It has a index action, an about action, and a contact action. Now, each of these are methods that will return a view using that view method. And the view for each of these are then located in these views folder. And again, if you will look in views under home, you will see there's the about, the contact, and the index views. The views describe the layout, the appearance. The controller is what determines which view is called and which data is passed to that view when you make a request to the site. Now, if you take a look at the index view, you will notice that there's not a huge amount of markup in here. It's fairly straightforward, fairly simple, but not a whole lot in here. And in fact, when you request this view, you'll see there's more to it than what's described just in the index view. And here's why. You may have noticed under the views that we have what's known as a view start. .cshtml. 
the view start specifies that all views in this uh, MVC application inherit and use the underscore layout.cshtml. In other words, this is like a master page. This contains kind of default uh, layout and appearance that, go, that applies to all pages. So if you look under shared at the underscore layout, you will see a whole bunch of markup. And this markup is used to then wrap the markup in those views that we describe individually. This is all about reusability of the interface or the interface parts. It saves us having to reinvent the wheel every time we build a view. So now that we've got our MVC project built, and we kind of got a handle on the structure, the next thing we want to do is bring Angular in. Now, Angular obviously is not included in the template here, so we're going to need to download it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our references over here. We're going to right click and we're going to choose manage NuGet packages. We're going to actually get Angular from the NuGet repository. So once my little designer opens up here, I'm going to search for Angular, AngularJS, and we're going to do this in online instead of install packages. So it's going to go out to NuGet, it's going to search around and it's going to find Angular for me, hopefully. Okay, so we've got Angular here. I'm gonna go ahead and just click the install button and it's gonna take a moment to download that and then it's gonna install it as a package in my project. Okay, so now while we're here, I also need to update my jQuery. So we're gonna go ahead and look for jQuery real quick and get that installed. We're gonna need that as part of this process. So we're gonna go ahead and install jQuery. All right, now in the uh, blog uh, material, he also mentions a library called underscore, J, underscore JS, which I'm not gonna install right now. There's a few issues with underscore JS, so I'm just going to kind of ignore that at this point. We don't really need it to complete our project here. Now, because we started with an MVC project, we really don't have any of the stuff that Angular needs. So we're gonna to have to build our routing, our controllers, all that other stuff, and we're gonna do this manually. Now, like I said, the other templates that you find out there will commonly generate a lot of this stuff for you. We're gonna do all this manually so you really have a good handle on the underlying structure of your Angular app. So what we're gonna do is first we're gonna to need to create a JavaScript file and define our Angular app or our module. Then we're gonna add our routing. We're going to add a controller. We're going to uh, manipulate the setup or set up the uh, bundle configuration for MB MVC. We're then going to attach our Angular module to our HTML and we're gonna do that in the layout page and in the index page. And then we'll just add a template page for that Angular to load so we can kind of see what's happening. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to create a folder. Now this folder will be under scripts. So we're gonna to go to our scripts section here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a new folder. If it'll catch up with me, there we go. And we're gonna just call this folder app. Pretty straightforward. Now within app, I'm going to right click and I'm going to now add to that folder a JavaScript file. And this JavaScript file will be called app.js. Okay, say okie dokie. Now, as soon as we open up app.js, I'm gonna plug some code in here and it looks kind of like this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste to make this a little quicker. So we're just gonna paste this in here. So what we're doing in this code is, first of all, we're defining an app object, <clears throat> excuse me, called app. This is my module, so we're giving it a, a name and we're also specifying our list of dependencies. Now, once we've done this, the next thing we need to do is then in our code, we're gonna to have to get our module. So for example, in the main controller, when you see that, we're gonna give it the name of the Angular module and then get the value of this module, my app. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to add a con our configuration for our routing to occur within our module. Now, right now we only have one route and it's called start and it's defined by that uh, start route provider, which you see here. Now, 
Um, if the route isn't requested in the URL, basically we're just going to redirect users over to the start route. So when a user requests the default page, MVC is going to send that page from the home controller and we're going to see our Angular app defined. Now, there's another piece we also need to build here and this is our controller. So we're going to go to the same folder, that app controller. I'm going to right click and again, I'm going to add a JavaScript file and this file will be called main control controller like so we'll say okie dokie and inside main controller we're also going to add a little code and it looks kind of like this so what we're doing is fetching the module my app and adding a controller to it called main controller and then to that controller we give a list of dependencies and a function that's going to be called with those dependencies now at this point we've got our uh, module and we have our controller now we need to actually plug this into our markup so that it will appear in our uh, UI so in order to do this what we're going to do is first we're going to go to our underscore layout file that we saw earlier so we're going to scroll down here and we're going to find underscore layout and I'm going to make a couple of changes first of all I'm going to go to my head section and in here I'm going to add a couple of references and they will look like this if I can find my paste there we are we're adding in a reference to the bundles angular and the bundles angular app now in addition to this in my body tag I need to make a couple of minor changes I'm going to refer to the ng dash app oh I can't type today app and we're going to give that a name of my app we're also going to specify an attribute of ng controller and again we're going to give this a name of root controller and basically what we've done here is we've added the bundles that we wanted to load and we just added them as script resources okay um, and we've added a root controller into the body tag which basically it, it's just an easy way to group the variables we want all the controllers to have because controllers kind of inherit properties from the parent controllers of the DOM so that's all we need to add to our layout page so now we have our layout sorted out the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go edit our bundle config class now bundle config is located under the app start folder so we're going to go open bundle config up and you'll notice basically what this is is a, a list of bundles that we're going to use in our application so I'm going to add a couple of bundles here and I'm just going to kind of drop them down here on the end and see if I can't make this look a little prettier because it kind of made it a mess here didn't it there we go all right so essentially what we're doing here is we're defining new bundles that are going to load the resources we need for angular a bundle is really just a group resource that allows us to kind of group files together in this case we're, we're dealing with JavaScript files so we're just kind of grouping these JavaScript files all together so that they will be available so now that we have all of the pieces and parts the bundles and scripts and everything that we need for angular installed now it's time to actually start plugging this into our markup so where we're going to start we're first going to go to the index page for my home controller so we're going to go down here to our views folder under home and we're going to choose index now index already has some markup you'll notice it has a jumbotron at the font at the top and then it has a row and within there it's got some text and some other stuff what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert some markup right here and essentially what I'm doing is attaching angular to this page all right so now that I've got angular attached to the page the next thing I need to do is add the template page that angular loads when you request the home main template page so for that I'm going to need to add a new view into my home folder so I'm going to come back over here to my home folder I'm going to right click on home and I'm going to add a new view MVC 5 view using razor and we're going to call this main so this will be my main view and we'll say OK now in my main view I'm going to basically replace all this code real quick 
So what I've done is I've replaced the code here with a very simple little template. And basically, this is the template page that Angular is going to load whenever you request the home main template. Now, the next thing I need to do is go to my home controller and add an action that will actually call or render this template. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here. We're going to go to our home controller. So we're going to look under controllers, under home controller. And we're simply going to add an action down here. And let me just drop this in here real quick. And I'm just going to put it at the end here. I don't really need that comment. And basically, very simple action called main simply returns a view. No, no rocket science here. This is just really simple stuff. Okay, so at this point, we've got all our pieces and parts in place. To kind of recap, basically what we did was we, first of all, built our JavaScript file to define our module, our application. We added routing. We added our controller. We went through our setup and set up our bundle config file to bundle all our files. We attached the Angular module into our HTML in the layout and the index pages. And then we simply added a template page for Angular to load. So at this point, if I just run my application, we'll give it a moment here, you'll notice when it starts up, that we got our jumbotron at the top basically what we have here is a layout view with a template loaded by angular and you'll notice it has a little h2 tag with that text main in there and a span underneath that says hello because all that gets replaced with a name variable from that dollar scope over in that main controller.js file okay I'd like to again thank Patrick Pearson for the inspiration for this video. You can check out some additional articles related to ASP.NET at sanito.se. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.